We are in Hilversum at the moment, and I'm speaking with Alex Sharp, Managing Director at Claritech and Leading Consultant, Speaker, and Instructor on Data Modeling. Um, Alec, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, could you explain to us what do you think are the main trends in data modeling? Well, there's, uh, there's some very interesting trends these days, uh, Werner, and I would say that the main one is the, the uptake, uh, the growth in interest in this as an analysis technique that can be used in a wide variety of, of fields or, or disciplines. So data modeling, data modeling fell out of favor for a few years, uh, quite a few years, because it became seen as a very technical undertaking. But we've developed this business-oriented or business-friendly approach, and now what we're seeing is a lot of business analysts coming to the course, a lot of BI professionals. Recently, I've had a lot of data scientists and big data people coming. So I think the main trend is this realization that data modeling is for everyone. It's really, it's a communication tool that later will lead to the design of data structures, but initially we should see it as a way to, to communicate with our business partners. Can you briefly outline, it's a two-day workshop, yes. so can you briefly outline the two-day workshop, a business-oriented approach to data modeling? All right, well, uh, it's broken into three main sections. Uh, initially, what we cover is actually what is a data model, and we establish that it's a way initially to describe a business, not data. And then once we've covered that introduction, uh, we move through the three phases of the development of a data model. So how do we build our initial conceptual model? How do we transition to our initial logical model? And then how do we refine and validate that logical model? So it traces the development that one might typically see. Okay. And what are the main topics that you cover during the workshop? Well, we, we cover a lot. It's a very full two days, uh, which people appreciate. So as I said, uh, the main topic initially is what actually is a data model? How do we position it as a way to communicate with the business? And then we move into the main components of any model. So rather than initially speaking about entities and relationships and attributes and cardinality, we start out talking about things and facts about things. So we have a very gentle approach initially to data modeling. Then we move into looking at how do we, what are some techniques like bottom-up and top-down techniques to build our initial conceptual model. We also learn in there what are some assessment criteria to tell if, if we're on the right track. One of, one of the hallmarks of the course is a lot of checklists, uh, scripts, procedures, hints, that make data modeling much more of a repeatable, but also flexible process. So once we've covered that, then when we move into making our model more detailed and rigorous, we, uh, we introduce normalization for mere mortals, mm -hmm. uh, how, how to actually get a normalized model without getting all technical and confusing. Uh, we also introduce some ideas about keys and identifiers and generalization and recursion. So we move into a little bit more sophisticated modeling. And then the final section is quite interesting. We, we look at first some techniques to make sure at the attribute level they are properly structured and granular. Just like in the previous phase, we made sure our entities were properly structured and granular. And then we move into using other analysis techniques. How, how do you use event analysis? How do you use use cases or user stories? How do we use service specifications? How do we use processes to validate and extend the model? So, this, but the underpinning the whole time is make, using techniques that are accessible accessible to a regular business person. Okay. Well, just when we come down to job titles, what, what's the target audience? What are the most common job titles that you find attending this course? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like a politician, Werner, and I, I'm going to answer a slightly different question, mm -hmm. which is, what were the job titles when I first developed the workshop, which was more years ago than I want to admit? Uh, and when we first developed the workshop, I decided that what I wanted to do was build a class on data modeling 
that was not initially for data professionals. It wasn't for database administrators and data analysts or data administrators. It was for business analysts and project leaders. So I, I had a very uh, non-technical approach. Now, as the years went by and I refined the workshop, it turned out that's what a lot of technical people wanted too. They were discovering, mm, I'm really good at the details, but I'm not so good at communicating with the business. So they started coming to the workshop, uh, you know, data professionals, more business analysts because of the trend that's going on, anybody who wanted to learn to communicate in this structured way. And now the interesting trend to me is how many BI professionals who are used to working in analytic uh, dimensional models are coming and just recently data scientists and big data professionals. That's been, a, that's been very interesting. When big data appeared on the scene, we were told you don't need to model, it's schemaless. Well, that turns out not to be quite true when you're trying to get something out of that big data, you still need some sort of a schema. So I'm getting a much wider range now of people, including interested business people, showing up in our workshop. Okay. And having mastered the, the entity relationship uh, method of, of, of data modeling, um, having mastered that, what are the main topics then that you cover in the, in the SQL in advanced data modeling? Okay, well, advanced data modeling, uh, not surprisingly, it, things get a little bit more advanced, but I can be more specific than that. We start looking at uh, how do I model more complex situations? How do I model multi-way associatives uh, to implement important business rules? What happens when I associate one associative with another associative. You know, I'm getting into fourth and fifth normal form problems. Uh, I start looking at interesting data structures, and a very popular section of the course is, how can I make use simultaneously of recursion and subtyping? Those turn out to be natural uh, soulmates to handle uh, complex situations, and possibly the most popular section of the course, we teach how do you present a data model to a non-technical audience? How, how do you convey this view of the business without getting into talking about entities and subtypes and supertypes and optionality? So we teach a non-technical approach that has been very popular in practice. Uh, we also cover uh, topics for the BI people, like how do you go from a well-structured ER model to a first cut dimensional model, and we look at uh, a lot of issues around time and history. Ever since the global financial crisis, there have been regulatory constraints on understanding how to model change and correction to data over time, uh, and that's just scratching the surface, but that's what comes to mind right now. So it's a, it, it's a lot of individual topics that collectively give people the skills to deal with more complex situations, but also to communicate better. Okay. And what's the type of teaching that you use during the workshop? Uh, anybody who has attended one of my workshops will say it is highly interactive. So I do not spend very much time at the front of the room hitting the clicker, the next screen button on a PowerPoint slide deck. So people are often up at the wall working with flip charts and post-its and whiteboards. And what I do is I take actual case studies I've worked on and then as a class we work through them. So adult learners like, number one, getting up out of their seat and moving. That's very important for engagement. Uh, number two, they like real life examples. Possibly the number one comment we get uh, in the evaluations of our courses was I appreciated the real life examples. And third, at the end of one of our workshops, there may be 30 or 40 flip charts of content around the room, and we keep going back to them to remind people of some of the basics that we've covered. So it's, it's quite an immersive experience. I have a lot of fun, the students have a lot of fun. Okay, well, um, what did I forget? Is there, is there anything you'd like to add, perhaps? Um, I, I, I think 
One topic I might like to bring up uh, is something I've been speaking about uh, lately in the data management circuit, which has been a surprise to me, and that is that the skills I have picked up through applying a business-friendly approach to data modeling, I'm now asked to apply them in situations I couldn't have imagined years ago. Uh, for instance, having to get a group of people to agree on what is a customer, well, I've become pretty good at facilitating groups of people. And in situations like arbitration or mergers, I'm often called in to help resolve communication issues, and I use basic data modeling techniques. So the fact that I can use this right outside of an IT discipline, and, and my clients were the first to recognize that, has been, uh, it's been a very interesting development. Okay. In fact, if I can say one more thing, I've been doing a presentation recently called The Multi-Skilled Influencer, and about how our skills with data modeling and data management can be applied in very interesting ways that we might not have expected. So come to the class, you'll like it. Well, I think we've covered uh, just about everything. Uh, well, not everything, but most of it. Um, thank you very much for the interview, Alec. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it's a pleasure talking about my favorite topic.